A stunning and unlikely alliance in the fight against global warming. A group of 28 leading evangelical Christians teaming up with top scientists, demanding the Bush administration do more to fight climate change. We're joined by members of that alliance, scientist Eric Shivian with the Center for Health and Global Environment, and the Reverend Richard Sizek with the National Association of Evangelicals. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, we're glad you could join us. Um, let's begin with you, Dr. Uh, Shivian. If you could just explain how these seemingly groups at opposite ends of the, the polls here got together. Well, our two groups don't usually uh, sit on the same stage, haven't since uh, perhaps the Scopes Monkey Trial. And we... Uh, and that didn't go so well for either uh, side, really. Well, that's true. Um, we approached this with some trepidation, both sides, but we found that we shared a really deep reverence for life and an enormous concern about what human activity was doing about it and that we had to work together to solve these problems. Reverend, we, Reverend Sizek, yes. do you feel the same way? I mean, what, oh, uh, absolutely. When the scientists said, let's get together, were you a little bit, uh, was there some trepidation? Well, uh, to a certain degree, yes. We didn't know quite what would happen, frankly. It could have gone very well or it really could have gone bad. But I think that the evangelical record over the last few years indicates that, look, we are willing to stand up and take the criticism if it comes from the right or from whomever and say that this is our biblical duty. So. Well, a little bit of intrepidation, absolutely, but I think it turned out beautiful, and yesterday's event is an example of how evangelical Christians and scientists can put aside the debate over whether the earth was created or it evolved to say, we have a duty to care about the earth and to address issues like habitat destruction, climate change, pollution, species extinction, and, uh, you know, the fact is, and Eric is a medical doctor, he can say, the spread of human infectious diseases is a consequence as well of climate change. And from right, Reverend, Reverend, point, that's a family issue. That's right, a family well, issue. Reverend, I want to ask you, though, you mentioned some of the, the debate. There's actually some de debate from within your, within your own ranks. There's a group of uh, leading evangelicals led by uh, Reverend James Dobson, who many people know mm -hmm. out there, uh, said this in, in a letter to you in part. Global warming is not a consensus issue. <clears throat> and our love for the Creator and respect for His creation does not require us to take a position. What do you say to those uh, members uh, of the evangelical flock who are not with you on this? Oh, I say I respect them. I appreciate them. But to Dr. Dobson, mm -hmm. of all people, I would say this is a sanctity of human life issue. For example, when children, 600,000 annually, one out of six children are born with mental retardation and other human disabilities associated with coal-burning utility plants and the pollution that comes from them that's then uh, passed into our rivers and streams, eaten by fish, and then taken in by pregnant women who pass it on to their unborn babies. Now that to me and to thousands and indeed millions of evangelical Christians, this is a sanctity of human life issue. So to I say uh, Dr. Dobson and all the others, please join us because we're on the same side, really, as evangelicals and as people who care. And I believe Dr. Dobson cares about these issues. Absolutely. Right, well, you know, well, let's invite him on and see what he has to say. Okay, about good. That would be kind of interesting. Yeah, I think so. Dr. Shivian, uh, there's been a lot of talk in advance of the President's State of the Union address next week that he's going to announce something about global warming. And, it's, uh, you know, of course, rumors like this tend to be all over the map. But one of the things that we're getting fairly mm -hmm. clearly from the White House is the President is not going to get behind any sort of imposed caps on greenhouse gas emissions. And the Bush administration thinking is that if you if you tie uh, up uh, industry in this country with these caps, you hurt the economy. What do scientists say to that argument? Well, the United States took the leadership role in the Montreal Protocol that protected the ozone layer, and we are hoping and looking to the United States to take a similar leadership role on these issues. You know, pr what's, protecting, what's, the ozone what's, layer, protecting the ozone layer was amounted to just banning a couple of specific type of chemicals which were easily replaceable. We're talking about an economy that lives, breathes, and functions on carbon. Clear, clearly, these issues are more complicated. But I think what's important is not just our dialogue, but what we are trying to say. And what we are saying is that unless we reduce significantly our burning of fossil fuels and our damaging of living species on Earth, we will create a, a world which we may have trouble recognizing with irreversible changes, more droughts, more heat waves, more famines, more floods and severe storms and infectious diseases. No one likes to think about these things, especially 
so early in the morning. But we must, must seriously take these threats, and we must demand of our political leaders and our representatives that they do so as well, so starting you, now. So you, starting reject, now. you reject the notion that this would hurt the economy? I think there have been many studies by serious economists all over this country that have shown that, in fact, switching to an economy that is developing energy efficiency and alternative energy systems is going to be the engine of economic growth for this country in the 21st century. We do not want the United States to be, be behind in that growth. Final thought here from uh, Reverend uh, uh, Sizek. Um, Reverend, there are so many things that evangelicals and scientists disagree on, and you touched on it, uh, how the universe was created, evolution, whatever, you, you can go down the list. There's not a lot of points of common ground. Why this issue? Well, I would disagree with you, Miles. Uh, we have some disagreements, yes. Uh, but let's face it, there isn't a war going on bet between religion and science, not really, but I'll let you, I'll let you to continue well, but, here. But just, just finally, though, what, what is it about this scientific point um, th that, that makes you come together? I think it's a fundamental issue here, a defining public policy issue which says, uh, for scientists it's the earth, for evangelicals it's the creation, and we have a biblical duty as evangelical Christians that comes straight from the Bible. Let's not be confused about me becoming an environmentalist or a pagan, that's what they call, some evangelical Christians call environmentalists, neo religions or whatever. Look, I am a fundamental Bible-believing evangelical Christian who knows that from Genesis to Revelation, this is what the Bible teaches me to do, to care about the creation. And that's what I agree with uh, Eric about, E.O. Wilson, uh, all of us that were at the press conference yesterday, pastors, seminary professors, we are affirming this is our duty. And that's why we're pressing the Bush administration to change its policy. All right, we got to end it there.